In chapter 14, we're going to learn about aromatic compounds, how to name them, how to identify them, and then in chapter 15, we will look at reactions of aromatic compounds. First, we're going to look at some benzene derivatives. Now, the interesting thing about aromatic compounds is that they can be found just everywhere. Uh, benzene is a very stable structure, and so you tend to find aromatic compounds and benzene derivatives all throughout nature. So our first structure is the structure of benzene. You're going to get very comfortable drawing that. Our next structure is benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde has the smell of cherries or almonds. Um, it's actually found in almonds. So it's a commonly used compound for flavoring. The next one is methyl salicylate. Methyl salicylate is a derivative of salicylic acid, which is found in willow bark. Um, it's used, another derivative of salicylic acid is used uh, in aspirin. Um, methyl salicylate itself is an analgesic compound. Our next one is eugenol. Um, this compound is found in clove oil. Um, this is one of the compounds that gives a kind of a numbing effect. So if you had a toothache or something, um, you could actually put some clove oil on it and it can actually kind of numb the area so that you don't feel the pain as much. Our next compound is cinnamaldehyde. It's probably a huge mystery where you can find this compound. Um, it, it's found in cinnamon. This is one of the compounds that gives cinnamon its distinctive smell. And then this last one is vanillin. Uh, vanillin is found in vanilla, and it is, again, one of the compounds that gives vanilla its smell. The determination of the structure of benzene is kind of a long story. Uh, for a long time, um, benzene was just kind of known as a compound, but the actual structure of it was very unclear. Um, particularly because it was suspected that there were alkenes present in benzene, but benzene itself doesn't act like any alkenes at all. And so um, that kept being questioned. So benzene does not react like alkenes or conjugated alkenes. And the reason why is that benzene is super stable. So the entire um, discovery of benzene and its structure um, was very confused because of its reactivity, but what we didn't understand yet was the stability that comes from being an aromatic compound. So for example, if you were to take benzene and react it with bromine um, in the dark at 25 degrees, um, you would actually find that no addition of bromine occurs, which is not what you would expect with an alkene or even a conjugated alkene. You would expect some sort of addition across the double bond. Uh, if you react benzene with potassium permanganate in water uh, at 25 degrees, you get no oxidation. If you uh, take benzene and put it into aqueous acid and even heat it up, you're not going to see any hydration reactions. And then lastly, if you react benzene with hydrogen and nickel, nothing is going to happen uh, typically, but if you put it at very high temperature and high pressure, eventually you will get some cyclohexane, but this reaction is very unfavorable. So eventually it was determined that the structure of benzene is exactly what we see it as today. This is known as the Kekulé structure for benzene. There's actually an accent on top of this last E there. Um, so this is equal to how we normally would draw benzene, just with a lot more information. And remember that this structure is equal to drawing benzene with the double bonds in slightly different positions. These two are resonance forms. And so because of that, you can draw benzene in a way that shows that the double bond is evenly shared across all of these bonds, or 
One of the common ways of drawing benzene is to draw a cyclohexane with a circle in it. That circle indicates the same thing that all those little hash marks represent, is that the double bonds are equally spread across all of the carbon-carbon um, connections. However, when we get to chapter 15, drawing this structure is not helpful. It's a good shortcut for when you just have to draw a structure, but if you have to draw a mechanism, which you will have to in chapter 15, you need the individual pi bonds so that you can use the individual pi electrons. So do not draw this structure in chapter 15. So benzene actually reacts by substitution instead of addition. So when you do a reaction with benzene, instead of adding across a double bond and losing a double bond, you end up replacing one hydrogen atom with a new um, substituent. This is uh, where the first idea of aromaticity actually came from. So some new words for us. Aliphatic means that it behaves like an alkane, alkene, or alkyne. So the chemistry can be predicted by knowing your generic hydrocarbon chemistry. Aromatic originally meant that the compound had a low carbon to hydrogen ratio, um, typically it's about one to one, and also is fragrant. Many aromatic compounds have a very strong aroma, uh, and therefore that's where the name aromatic actually came from. Now we define aromaticity by Huckel's rules um, and whether or not it behaves like a benzene compound. So these are both things that we're going to go over very soon. So a couple times I've referenced that benzene is super stable. Um, I'm going to use the hydrogenation of alkenes to demonstrate this. So on our y-axis we have the potential energy and along the bottom we have the energy level of cyclohexane. And we're going to look at how much energy is released by the hydrogenation of an alkene. So when we have cyclohexane and we add one equivalent of hydrogen, 120 kilojoules per mole are released in this reaction. Now, if we have um, cyclohexadiene, we would expect that since we had two double bonds to hydrogenate, it should be roughly twice this amount of energy released. So we're looking for a number around 240. And sure enough, we see that uh, 232 kilojoules per mole are released in this reaction the addition of two equivalents of hydrogen to two alkenes. So that means that if we have three double bonds, like in benzene, what we would expect is roughly three times the amount of energy released as is released in the hydrogenation of cyclohexene. But what, so that would be 360 kilojoules per mole. But what we actually see is much less than that. It's actually less than the energy released from um, cyclohexadiene. Now, the reason that there's such a difference in the expected energy is because benzene is so stable. It's very hesitant to give up its first double bond. And so this is much less exothermic than we would expect. Now, the hydrogenation of benzene actually requires to put so much more energy into it that less energy actually ends up being released by the reaction. We're going to take a look at some of the modern theories about the structure of benzene. So the first one is uh, the importance of the resonance form of benzene. So I've drawn the two different ways that you can draw benzene out. Now the resonance forms show that you can take these pi electrons and put them here and that's going to cause these pi electrons to shift here which pushes these pi electrons over one and that gives us our structure on the right. Now the structure on the right can be reverted back to the previous structure by shifting electrons again. So these two equivalent resonance forms are part of the reason that benzene is so stable. 
And remember, this is resonance. They are not in equilibrium with each other. Neither one of these is the true form of benzene exactly because um, benzene is not alternating double and single bonds. Instead, we have six equivalent like 1.5 bonds. Also, uh, keep in mind that benzene is planar and all of the carbon-carbon bonds are of equal length. So every single carbon involved in benzene is sp2 hybridized. Therefore, benzene itself is planar. It's completely flat. And the hydrogens that are attached to each carbon in benzene are also going to be in the same plane. So the next thing we're going to look at is the molecular orbital explanation of the structure of benzene. So since every carbon atom is sp2 hybridized, that means that each of these carbon atoms has one unhybridized p orbital. And these p orbitals are in parallel to each other. And this is actually what is creating the pi bonds around benzene. So you have overlap around the top of the benzene structure, and then you have overlap around the bottom of the benzene structure. So we have pi electron density above and below the actual carbon framework of the benzene molecule. So if you were to picture benzene completely flat, so let's say we took our eyes and we were looking at the structure from here. So all of the atoms are in the same plane we would see the pi electron density on top and we would see pi electron density on the bottom like a weird hamburger. So our pi electron density again is above and below the carbon framework. And I'm repeating this over and over because it's really important to the reactivity of benzene. <clears throat> 